Good morning, this is devotional number 385, and today's date is December 1st, 2017. We've been looking at the account of Naaman the leper in 2 Kings 5 this week, and today I'd like to focus on verses 13 through 16, where we read, And his servants came near, and spake unto him, and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he saith to thee, Wash, and be clean? Then went he down, and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As Jehovah liveth, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. This story is a fitting example of unsaved man's desperate attempts to do that which is humanly impossible. Unregenerate man desires nothing more than to prove that he can get right with his maker and judge regardless of the cost or sacrifice. It becomes a challenge of sorts, like running a marathon or performing some other physical feat or enduring intense bodily suffering. Uh, there are people, for example, that will walk uh, a mile or two or more on their knees uh, scraping their knees so that their knees are bloody by the time they get to a, a particular so-called holy place. Uh, however, uh, on the surface, these things might appear to some to be noble, but in actuality, they expose the depths of man's spiritual deadness and depravity and prove that he fully deserves the reward for his labors that await him, and that is death and annihilation. To Naaman's sin-tainted mind, washing in the Jordan River was no great feat. The, the thing that he didn't understand initially was that it was the command of God Almighty. And it is also a picture, since the Jordan River is uh, symbolic, symbolical of hell, or the grave. It's a picture of Christ going through death and annihilation for his people, which we have learned took place uh, at the foundation of the world. However, uh, by God's grace, Naaman did listen to his servant's advice. And herein lies the crux of the whole matter. Salvation is always according to the Word of God, the Bible. James 1.21 proclaims, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted Word which is able to save your souls. Uh, 1 Peter 1.23 adds, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And of course, we have to keep in mind that this took place uh, during the day of salvation. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 29, drives home the point that Naaman was soon to learn firsthand. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? 
where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised. Hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. In spite of Naaman's anger, initially, God gave him the grace to obey his command, and he was cleansed of his leprosy. Zechariah 13.1 beautifully illustrates the cleansing from our innate spiritual leprosy that God has provided uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ uh, during the day of salvation. In that day, there shall be a fountain opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. <clears throat> Sadly, however, there were and are many in the churches, in and out of the churches, really, all over the world uh, during the day of salvation who were not trusting solely in God's salvation program as outlined in the Bible, though they paid lip service to it. They are identified by the words of Jeremiah 2.13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Second Kings 5.15 reveals, And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee take a blessing of thy servant, which Elisha refused to do, because God's grace is without money, without price. Each true believer typified by Naaman has come to know God personally through his gospel of sovereign electing grace. 1 John 5.20 says, And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and life, and eternal life. 